Now we want to respond the player and have some kind of a number on the screen saying in how many seconds the player will respond. Now we want this to only appear on the uh, client where the player has died. So before we go any further, we need to create the actual text that will be displayed on the screen. And in order to do so, I'm going to click on the canvas inside Unity and inside of the canvas, I will add what we call uh, a text. So game object, UI and text. Here we go. It's called text. I'm going to rename it and I'm going to say uh, text respond. Now the way its name is important because we're going to be using that to get it and be able to modify it. So make sure you have the right one. All right. Next thing I want to do is actually use that. And I'm going to use this inside of the player response script. So locate the player response script and let's go ahead and modify this. All right. So now we want to get a hold of this only on the um, only on the whenever the, 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 the uh, player is dying. And if you take a look at it here inside of the RPC respawn here, we have a timer here, 2.5 seconds, but we need to create a timer and, um, and be able to display that. But before we do so, let's get a hold of the button. How do we do this? Well, we can do um, game object, button object. Actually, that's not a button, I'm sorry, that's um, that's a text. So that's text respawn object is equal to game object dot find and we're going to put its name and the name is text respawn. All right. Now, next thing you want to do is get the text property of this. How do you do this? Well, if you look at Unity, whenever you click on the text respawn, on the side, it has a text property here, and that's the one we want to edit. So let's go ahead and grab it. We're going to do, by the way, you need Unity Engine.UI to be able to do that, to grab the text. So make sure you have the UI. You should already have it anyway. So text, text respawn is equal to text respawn object dot get component, and the component is the text. All right. So now we have access to the text and we can say that text respond dot text is equal to and here we're going to have to put a number. But just for the sake of trying, I'm going to put the number nine so that we see that we can access that. All right. OK. Um, by the way, also before this even starts, we want the text to be uh, to be empty. So we're going to make sure that this is empty. And now the last thing we need to do is also take care of the Iron Man behavior script. So I'm going to go in Unity and make sure that we stop the shooting, right? So once we're dead, we cannot shoot. And um, and we want to update that on the respawn and, and re-enable the shooting. So I'm going to look for the uh, Iron Man, the Iron Man behavior script. There it is. And double click on it to open it. Here it is. And now what I want to do inside of this I want to locate the place where we are um, doing the update and the fixed update. So first of all, the is enabled. We're not going to need this anymore because this is for the enemies. But now uh, this is always going to be the enemies are always going to be um, doing something because there are multi players, not just one player. So I'm going to remove that and I'm also going to remove the is enabled. So I'm going to go all the way up and you can see the is enabled. I'm just going to remove the whole line. Now I'm going to do a command F or control F and look for is enabled. And I'm going to remove the logic everywhere that we have the is enabled. I don't need that anymore. Next, this is another one. So disable. I don't need a disable movement. All right, I'm going to remove that. And um, and uh, I'm sure that I'm breaking the uh, the player enemy script. So I'm going to look for it. I, actually, I'm going to save and go back to Unity. And as you can see, it's complaining. So I can go to the console and see that the uh, the enemy attack, because this is stopping the enemy attack, as you can see. If there's no player movement, but I don't need this right now. So I'm going to remove that. All right. And save this. All right. Now going back to. Um, so now I need to go back to the uh, Iron Man behavior script and uh, I'm done with the is enabled. And what I want to do is 
Um, take a look at the update. As you can see, my update is totally empty. I don't need to do anything in this update, but I do have a fixed update. As you can see, my fixed update here is doing a bunch of things. But what I want to do is that uh, I don't even want to take all of this. I just want to take that only um, after. So I want to do here if is local player actually so if it's if it's not the local player I'm just gonna return straight I don't want to execute any of the code I don't want to be able to take the uh, coordinates there's no need of, of doing that so I can remove this piece of code and this piece of code as well All right so I'm gonna do command X command V so that it's uh, synchronized it's, it's aligned all right it's playing again and I'm going to kill the um, the uh, white character and let's see if a number pops up Yes, see, the number 9 does appear. Now, there's a problem. It appears on both machines. It's supposed to only appear on the one that we respond, which is the one on the right side. So we got to fix that as well. But already we have the number appearing. So that's a very good start. Now, I'm back inside of the player response script. And what I want to do is make sure that this number only appears, the response number only appears on the player that is responding. So we got to add if is local player then we run the code and if it's not then we won't run that code so that this only runs on the local player that that is dying all right now we want to create a countdown so to do a countdown we're going to do int countdown value max or let's just say starting value C countdown starting value all right and we're going to put that value to be we said nine seconds, so I'm gonna put nine. Now I'm gonna make this public so that just in case we want to change this through the code, um, through the Unity interface, we can do it straight here. All right, and um, and now we can use that. So um, what we're going to do also is add a private int countdown current value. All right, and now before starting so if it's local player we're going to reset the countdown how do we do this well right here we can say countdown current value is equal to countdown starting value so we make making the countdown to start where it is and now we need to invoke a method every second that will do the the, the decrement so invoke and we don't have it yet, so we need to create. Actually, uh, so invoke repeating. And the repeating needs the, the method name. The method name would be, um, would be um, respond text uh, uh, update, update response, update respond text. All right. And then what we need is the time. So we're going to call this every second. So 1.0f and then um, oh, I'm sorry, the, the time is when this starts. So yes, it starts in one second, that's good. And the repeat rate would be every one second as well. All right, and I'm gonna close this now. All right, and now let's create the update respond text. I'm gonna go at the end of this file and then just typing it. I don't need to make it public, so just void update respond text. And what it does, first, it takes the uh, countdown, so countdown current value, minus minus. So basically, it's going to decrement by one. And then we want to, dis to display the text. So by the way, the text response text here should not be nine. It should be, it should be um, the value, which is countdown current value dot to string. All right. Or we could, we could also say, uh, something like responding in, responding in, and then the number. But anyway, there's no need to do that because people will understand by by having the string that's that's uh, decrementing that it's a response. So that's okay. All right. And then once we do the decrement, we update the uh, the text. So we don't have the text response, so I need to get it as well. And then. Next thing, oh yeah, I don't have a text respond object. Same thing, take the respond object as well. And then 
Now that we have the, the new value here, what we need to do is an if statement. If the countdown current value has reached zero, is less or equal to zero, then guess what? Then it's time to respond, right? Time to respond player. All right. So how do we respond the player? Well, we have the method, um, we can just create a method that would call the RPC respond, okay? Now, the reason why I don't want to do that is that this will only do it on the local player. It will not respond on the server as well. So I don't want to do that. What I want to do is uh, put, um, put the, uh, without the if statement, I can just, um, uh, oh yeah, by the way, what I need to do now is actually cancel. So if the countdown is zero, we stop here. Okay, so we remove the countdown. So how do we do that? Well, uh, there's a cancel invoke, okay? And the cancel revoke will be the name of the uh, actual method we want to cancel, which is update respond text. All right. And there we go. Now, oh yeah, one more thing here. Make sure that instead of 2.5, we're going to put the actual value, which will be the countdown starting value. And last but not least, the um, if local player respond should be inside, meaning that the, the RPC response should not be for just the local player. We want the response to happen on both. So the response is here, but the text is only on one side. So this is for two sides and this is only on the client. All right. Train this out. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the purple character from the client side on the right side. All right, almost dead. And there we go. And now it's at seven, six, and only on one side. Perfect. And get ready, it's about to respond soon. Let's see. And there we go. Now, obviously, we see one problem. It's saying zero, so we just gotta fix this. Well, it's very easy now. We just have to empty this out. All right. Let's go ahead and empty this out. Going back to Mono Develop. At the end, once it's doing uh, the cancel invoke, we also want to. Um, take the text respond and put that to, we put this to, um, to empty, just like this. All right, empty and save. Okay, and that's it.